return. Might you have news? You have? Wonderful. Let us go at once to Eamon's side and see if the urn's healing powers live up to their reputation. deathly ill for a very long time. Do you remember nothing? Tegan? What are you doing here? Where is Isolde? I am here, my husband. And Connor? Where is my boy? Where is our son? He lives. Though many others are dead. There is much to tell you, husband. Dead? Then... it was not a dream. Much has happened since you fell ill, brother. Some of it will not be... easy for you to hear. Then tell me. I wish to hear all of it. This is most troubling. There is much to be done, that is true. But I should first be thankful to those who have done so much. Grey Warden, you have not only saved my life, but kept my family safe as well. I am in your debt. Will you permit me to offer you a reward for your service? I understand, but regardless of your motivations, I feel you are worthy of a reward. I would like to honor your efforts, nothing more. Then so be it. Know that you have my thanks, even so. We should speak of Loghain, brother. There is no telling what he will do once he learns of your recovery. Loghain instigates a civil war even though the Darkspawn are on our very doorstep. Long I have known him, he is a sensible man. One who never desired power. I was there when he announced he was taking control of the throne, Eamon. He is mad with ambition, I tell you. Mad indeed. Mad enough to kill Caelan to attempt to kill myself and destroy my lands. Whatever happened to him. Loghain must be stopped. What's more, we can scarce afford to fight this war to its bitter end. We have no time to wage a campaign against him. Someone must surrender if Ferelden is to have any chance at fighting the Darkspawn. I agree. Loghain will pay for his heinous crimes, but our armies must be reserved for the Darkspawn, not for each other. I will spread word of Loghain's treachery, both here and against the King. But it will be but a claim made without proof. Those claims will give Loghain's allies pause, but we must combine it with a challenge Loghain cannot ignore. We need someone with a stronger claim to the throne than Loghain's daughter, the Queen. Are you referring to Alistair, brother? Are you certain? I would not propose such a thing if we had an alternative. But the unthinkable has occurred. You don't know? I, uh, meant to tell you when we were approaching Redcliffe, but, um... Alistair is King Merrick's illegitimate son. He is Caelan's half-brother and has a claim to Ferelden's throne. Tegan and I have a claim through marriage, but we would seem opportunists no better than Loghain. Alistair's claim is by blood. And what about me? Does anyone care what I want? You have a responsibility, Alistair. Without you, Loghain wins. I would have to support him for the sake of Ferelden. Is that what you want? I... B but I... No, my lord. I see only one way to proceed. I will call for a landsmeet. A gathering of all of Ferelden's nobility in the city of Denerim. There, Ferelden can decide who shall rule, one way or another. Then the business of fighting our true foe can begin. What say you to that, my friend? I do not wish to proceed without your blessing.
You have already found allies, but we need those to fight Darkspawn. I truly believe the Landsmeet is our best option. We could attempt to wage a military campaign against Loghain, but even if we win, would we have enough left to defeat the Darkspawn? No, but neither would Loghain. Perhaps Loghain gambles on this attitude, that everyone will decide facing the Darkspawn is more vital than facing him, so that he leads us against the Horde. That depends. If we cannot get a consensus in the Landsmeet for Alistair, we cannot afford to oppose Loghain either. Does that mean Loghain could win? A man who killed his own king, who has gone mad with power? Perhaps. We must see that he does not. I hope that's a joke. I hope it does not come to that. If you are suggesting surrender, consider that he has already sought your death. You think he will spare you, knowing what you know? Very well. I will send out the word. But before we proceed, I believe there is the matter of the mage, my son's tutor. He still lives, I understand. He does. He is in the dungeon, brother. Have him brought here, Tegan. I wish to see him. Jowan, what you have done is not in question. You tried to assassinate me and set into motion a series of events that nearly destroyed everything I cherish. What have you to say in your own defense? Nothing, my lord. Other than to say I am sorry. I expect no mercy for what I've done. I see. Grey Warden, have you anything to say on Jowan's behalf? Oh? That is... unexpected. And what would you have me do? As the injured party, my ability to see the merciful path is... strange. True enough, and wisely said. Jowan, I hereby turn you over to the Tower of the Circle of Magi. May the Maker have mercy on your soul. Thank you, my lord. Now, back to the matter of the Landsmeet. We should head to Denerim as soon as possible. I can delay that, however, if you have other plans. I would prefer not giving Loghain time to consider, but it is up to you. I do not wish to go to Denerim unless you are with me. Excellent. I shall make the arrangements. Let us be off to Denerim, and may the Maker watch over us. Denerim is the heart and soul of Ferelden. It was the city of King Kalanhad, the birthplace of Andraste. As stubborn as a Mabari, and as good to have on your side. If we defeat Loghain here, the rest of the nation will follow. By calling the Landsmeet, I've struck the first blow. The advantage, for the moment, is ours. He will have little choice but to show himself, to oppose us directly. He will strike back at us. The only question that remains is how soon. Loghain, this is an honor that the Regent would find time to greet me personally. How could I not welcome a man so important as to call every lord in Ferelden away from his estates while a blight claws at our land? The blight is why I'm here. With Caelan dead, Ferelden must have a king to lead it against the Darkspawn. Ferelden has a strong leader. It's queen. And I lead her armies. Ah, the Grey Warden recruit. I thought we might meet again. You have my sympathies on what happened to your order. It is unfortunate that they chose to turn against Ferelden. Don't interrupt, Churl. Your betters are talking. Enough, Carthrian. This is not the time or place. I had hoped to talk you down from this rash course, Eamon. Our people are frightened. Our king is dead. Our land is under siege. We must be united now if we are to endure this crisis. Your own sister, Queen Rowan, fought tirelessly to see Ferelden restored. Would you see her work destroyed? 
You divide our nation and weaken our efforts against the Blight. Your selfish ambitions to the throne. I should put my faith in untried foreign hands. Do you think I'm blind? Kalen depended on the Grey Warden's prowess against the Darkspawn, and look how well that ended. Let us speak of reality rather than tall tales. Stories will not save us. I cannot forgive what you've done, Loghain. Perhaps the Maker can, but not I. Our people deserve a King of the Theron bloodline. Alistair will be the one to lead us to victory in this blight. Oh, is that all I have to do? No pressure. The Emperor of Orlais also thought I could not bring him down. Expect no more mercy than I showed him. There is nothing I would not do for my homeland. Well, that was bracing. I didn't expect Loghain to show himself quite so soon. My sister married King Merrick while he was still in exile. At that time, he and Loghain were inseparable. The wild prince who'd never seen the inside of a castle and the farmer's son. When Loghain joined Merrick's rebels, he was just a raw-boned boy, but he got on one knee to swear that he would see Ferelden free or die trying. I admit, Rendon Howe has never been my favorite man to deal with. He can be charismatic enough, I suppose, but he always seemed the kind of man who enjoyed kicking stray dogs. I would not have thought Loghain would trust him. We need eyes and ears in the city. Loghain has been here for months. The roots of all his schemes must begin here. The sooner we find them, the better we can turn them to our advantage. Go have a look around, and see what you can turn up. Better yet, find the nobles who have arrived for the landsmate. Test the waters. See how many will support us. When you're ready to talk strategy, come upstairs to my sitting room. We can lay out our plans for the landsmate then. Everything in here appears to be breakable. It seems most impractical. It doesn't have better things to do. I like to think of them as accessories. I suspect that it is an art that was practiced when golems were more, um, commonplace. My former master collected whatever lore he could find on the subject. He searched far and wide to collect what crystals he could and then added them. It is not an unpleasant sensation. So, I would assume... My former master enjoyed poking around the ruins in the deep roads after all, and bartering with others who did. As I understand it, the crystals allow me to alter the flow of magic around me. Wilhelm had hoped to turn me into a battery of mana, something he could tap at will. Some of the crystals increase the presence of mana, some absorb or reflect spells. There are various kinds. All I can promise is that, should it ever find one of these crystals, I can likely tell it the function and what it would do if... added to me. Why not? I don't get to wear clothing and other adornments like the rest of you creatures, after all. That answers its question, I assume? Unless it has more... Better to save them for the next random stranger it decides to interrogate. Let us leave now.
You know, I could get to like this. The last time I came to Denerim, I stayed at an inn so filthy the bedbugs had fleas. What say you? By all means. I know little enough of the daily, other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All is tale in the book. How should I know? My mother was a whore, as you'll recall. None of the other elven boys in the whorehouse knew their fathers. I was not so unusual. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. It could have been much worse. Shall I tell you about what happened to the other whorehouse boys who did not fetch a decent price with the crows? Surely your life has not been so idyllic. People like you and I are not the product of happy lives of contentment, after all. My original point is that my mother's Dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make, I knew that much, and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course, as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, they were discovered, and I never saw them again. <laughs> oh, there has been plenty. To tell the truth, it is because I expected nothing more. Still, even I eventually thought that it would be better for me if I ran off to join the famous Dalish when one of their clans drew near Antiva City. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy, staring at those gloves. But, such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. among the old visitors. None of them looked all that princely to me. So many visitors, so many people. Right. How many times I gotta tell you before to make it through that pointy skull? Bank the coals at night, or the... Excuse me, I have to dust the Isle's sitting room. The Chamberlain disapproves of us. If Lady Isolde hadn't brought me into this household from Redcliffe last year, I'd never have been given a place. I beg your pardon, sir, but I really can't be seen standing about. The housekeeper will have my head. Good day. As you wish. One more servant asks if I would like a change of clothes, I will set the house on fire. What comes, my friend? Ah, warden. I trust you've made yourself comfortable. Good, because it's likely to be your last rest for a while. This is Elena. She's... I am Queen Enora's handmaiden. She sent me here to ask for your help. Or perhaps the young lady prefers to speak for herself. The Queen. She is in a difficult position. She loved her husband, no? And trusted her father to protect him. When he returned with no king and only dark rumors, 
What does she to think? She worries, no? But when she tries to speak with him, he does not answer. He tells her not to trouble herself. My queen suspects she cannot trust her father. And Logan, he is very subtle, no? But when and how, he is privy to all the secrets and not so subtle. So she goes to how? A visit from the queen to the new Isle of Denrum is only a matter of courtesy. And she demands answers. He calls her every sort of name, traitor being the kindest, and locks her in a guest room. King Kaelin was like a son to him, and Loghain left him to die. Does he love Anora more? Who can say? I think her life is in danger. I heard how say she would be a greater ally dead than alive, especially if her death could be blamed on Arl Eamon. We may have no choice but to trust Anora. The Queen is well loved. If Loghain succeeded in pinning her death on me, I'm not sure that's a risk we can afford to take. I have some uniforms. Earl Howe hires so many new girls every day, a few more will not cause much stir. I will show you to the servants and friends. We must slip in and out with my queen before anyone is the wiser. I will go ahead to Howe's estate. Meet me there as soon as you can. I haven't been here in a while. They've changed the dining room. Something on your mind? Yes, me too. And I got the feeling at the end there that it saw us, was aware of us, whatever you want to call it. Could have just been my imagination, I suppose. What do you think? Well, short of waltzing through the entire Darkspawn horde and tapping it on the nose, I'm not sure just how we're supposed to do that. But killing the Archdemon is the general plan, I understand. Good to have you on board. I guess one thing is certain, at least, isn't it? It's official. This is a blight.